Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Also, I do want to encourage you to check out my wife's business, Ashira Clips. There she sells a wide variety of different hair pins, hair clips, and headbands to suit a wide variety of different styles and hair types. You can check it out at lilarose.com slash Ashira. That's L-I-L-L-A Rose dot com slash Ashira, A-S-H-I-R-A. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date, May 25th, 1949, and the title is Murder in the House of Torture. Next, Mr. Chameleon and the case of murder in the House of Torture. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly interesting disguise which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Case of Murder in the House of Torture. Our story tonight is one of the most ghastly in the annals of crime. And it opens with Mr. Chameleon in the office of the Commissioner of Police. The Commissioner is saying... Chameleon, I'm assigning you to one of the strangest, most brutal murder and torture cases in my experience. Ah, what's it all about, Commissioner? About a week ago, a decrepit house in Hell's Kitchen was suddenly given a coat of paint, fixed up to look dignified and new. Then a bronze plate was put up saying, The Funeral Home of Eternal Peace. An uh, undertaking establishment? Well, the bronze plate said, the funeral home of eternal peace. Oh. Well, night before last, there was a big holdup two blocks away from it. It looked as though the robbers ran around the funeral home, so four of our men followed them. There were a lot of lights on in the funeral home. Then, all at once, every light in the place went out. Uh-huh. One of the policemen rang the bell. A doleful man with the look and clothes of an undertaker opened the door. He said he hadn't heard anything of the holdup. But he turned out the lights because it was closing time. Well, what's it all about, Commissioner? Just wait and you'll find out, Chameleon. I see. The next night, the same policeman noticed that the funeral home was not lighted and wondered why. Thinking the escaped hold-up men might have slipped in and were hiding there. Yes, and that maybe they'd kill the undertaker. So they rang the bell. No answer. Then they broke in and found an amazing situation. Well, what situation? It's so strange, Chameleon, that I, I won't tell you what they found. You go down there and see for yourself. I want you to form your own conclusions firsthand. If you wanted to whet my curiosity, Commissioner, you have done it. I'll get Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold and go down there right away. And so, Mr. Chameleon and Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold throw open the doors of the funeral home of eternal peace and walk in. Then they stop short in horror. 
Mr. Chameleon says... Great heavens! I never saw anything like this before, Mr. Chameleon. It's horrible. The shambles. That man hanging from the ceiling, murdered. And tortured, Dave. His clothes torn off. Look at those deep burns. What's that brand on his chest? It says silence. And look, Dave, there are six knives sticking in his body. Yeah. And there are two more bodies over there. Gosh, Mr. Chameleon, their clothes are half torn off, too. Yes. I think the killer meant to torture them, too, Dave, but um, something interrupted. Lucky devils. Dave, what's that in the corner? It's three coffins. Here's a cardboard box. Anything in it, Mr. Chameleon? Twelve knives, Dave. Identical to the one stuck in the hanging man. That proves these other two were supposed to get the same treatment. Six knives in each. Mr. Chameleon, what's that big door over there? We'll see, Dave. Oh, it's a garage. A nice new hearse in it. And painted on the side... The funeral home of eternal peace. Hmm. Funeral home. This house has hardly a piece of furniture in it. No instruments for undertaking and embalming. It's no funeral home, Dave. It's a house of torture and horrible death. You said it. Dave, go to the Bureau of Licenses and check on whether they ever issued a license to the funeral home of eternal peace. What does it all mean, Mr. Chameleon? I don't know, Dave, but I have an idea. And later, in Mr. Chameleon's office at Central Police Headquarters, we find Mr. Chameleon poring over three photographs from the police rogues' gallery when Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold comes in, saying, I've been to the License Bureau, Mr. Chameleon. No such place as the funeral home of eternal peace ever got a license in this I city. I suspected as much, Dave. It was a blind. Yes, but why such a gruesome blind? And why the six knives? Well, Dave, the three dead men were police informers. Over the past few years, they've tipped the police off to dozens of crimes. Stoolies, huh? Mm-hmm. The one that was hung and tortured was big boy Harlan. It all fits in with the torture and the word silence branded on big boy's chest. So that's it. Revenge. Someone got sore because they squealed to us. Right. This was a gang killing. There's no doubt about it, Dave. Yeah, but what gang? Yeah. Mr. Chameleon, mm. maybe if we studied the records of the tip-offs those bozos gave the police... We'd find out which particular gangster was double-crossed and had a reason for being out after their blood. Yes, Dave, that's exactly what I've been doing. And? And nothing. The list includes over a hundred squeals. It takes in every big gangster, one way or another. So where does that leave us? Up a tree. Oh, Chameleon, have you seen the papers? No, Commissioner. What's happened now? The body of a woman, another police informer, has just been found on a lonely road out in the suburbs. Found... Piece by piece. Piece by piece? Yes, spread along the road. A leg, an arm, a hand, and finally the head. Christmas. Who was she, Commissioner? Can we tie this up with any one hoodlum? Oh, it's the same old story, Chameleon. A long list of squeals taking in everybody. This thing's a nightmare. Mr. Chameleon. What is it, officer, Case Ain? We've just got news, bad news. Oh, what now? Well, a couple of hours ago, a tip-off came to a detective in the bank robin division over the phone. He went to the place where he was supposed to meet the guy who phoned. They just found the detective, shot and killed. Casey, were there six knives in his body? Yeah, there were, Mr. Comedian. Then this killing is part of the funeral home case. Commissioner, at least we know now that the head of the gang who operated in the funeral home is the head of a vicious gang of bank robbers and killers. Yes, but why six knives, Chameleon? I don't know yet, Commissioner, but it sounds to me like the work of Smiley Rippon. The fellow who runs that nightclub? Mm-hmm. I'm going to drop into that nightclub and see him. Mr. Chameleon, watch your step. Smiley's a dangerous customer. Well, if he is the head of this ring, Dave, as he may well be, then calling him dangerous is an understatement. And so Mr. Chameleon finds himself in the back room of the nightclub run by Smiley Rippon, a tough and deadly customer. As Mr. Chameleon enters, Smiley glances at his wife, Ruby, and then turns his beady eyes on Chameleon, saying, What do you want? I'm Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. Who's this woman, Smiley? 
Uh, wife Ruby? What's it to you? i just like to know who I'm talking to. What are you sniffing around here for, Chameleon? Smiley, what do you know about the funeral home of eternal peace? Just what I read in the papers. Why did you torture and kill Big Boy Harlan? Big Boy Harlan? He squealed on you and you bumped him off. Come off it, Chameleon. I don't know nothing about this. Treat him gently, Smiley. He's a smart boy with a college education. Yeah. If he don't watch out, I'm going to promote him out the door. Where were you Saturday night when the murder took place, Smiley? I was right here in the club. I got half a dozen people who'll swear to it. All of members of your mob, I imagine. I didn't, wouldn't take their word on the weather. You haven't got a thing on me, so scram. Those men were killed because they squealed on someone. And I think that someone was you, Smiley. You lay off me, chameleon. If you want to live very long. Well, thank you for the warning. I'm frightened to death. Ah, why are you picking on Smiley anyway? Why don't you go after Finelli? Shut up, Ruby. What for? I ain't afraid of Finelli. Finelli used to be one of your boys, uh, didn't he, Smiley? Yeah. But uh, lately he's been moving into the big time. That's right, chameleon. And he had plenty of reason to kill those jerks in the funeral home. How come, Ruby? I heard him shooting his mouth off about how big boy Harlan ratted on him. And how he was going to get even with the stool pigeon. You interest me strangely, Ruby. If you don't mind, I will use your phone. What are you doing now? Just phoning headquarters, Smiley. Central headquarters, Casey speaking. Casey, this is Chameleon. Do you remember that bird that we had in on the West Side Bank job, Finelli? Yep. Couldn't get a thing on him. Send out a general alarm for him. I want him picked up and brought into the office. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. So long, Casey. Well, we'll soon know what Mr. Finelli has to say. And as for you, Smiley, I'm not through with you yet. I told you to lay off, Chameleon. If you don't, I'll... You know my slogan, Smiley. The innocent must be protected. The guilty must be punished. And I intend to carry that out no matter who tries to intimidate or threaten me. And with this declaration of war, Mr. Chameleon returns grimly to headquarters, where he finds Detective Sergeant Arnold waiting for him. The boys have brought in Finale, Mr. Chameleon. He's outside. Fast work. Send him in, Dave. Just a second, Mr. Chameleon. This uh, box here on your desk came while you were out, addressed to you. Oh, let me see it. Dave, do you suppose that someone is remembering me with a little bomb? Just what I was thinking. Well, I am not sticking my neck out in order to get my head blown off. Dave, take this box to the bomb squad for treatment. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. Send in Finelli, will you? Right. By the way, Mr. Chameleon, the boys caught Finelli at the airport. Leaving town? Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Okay, Finelli, Mr. Chameleon, I'll see you now. Ah, Mr. Finelli. Did you come in? What do you want with me, Mr. Chameleon? I want to know what you had to do with the funeral home murders. Why you tortured and killed Big Boy Harlan and three other informers and one detective. What are you dragging me into this for? I had nothing to do with any of it. Finelli, I've heard that Big Boy squealed on you and that you threatened to get him for it. Who says so? Smiley Rippin says so and his wife Ruby. They're lying. Smiley did it himself. What makes you think so? Well, what other reason would he have for trying to pin it on me? Why were you trying to leave town, Finelli? The guy can take a trip if he wants to, can he? Where were you going? What business is that of yours, Mr. Chameleon? Your trips become my business, Finelli, when they happen to be timed so perfectly. Where were you Saturday night? I was playing poker. Three people will give me an alibi. Ah, you hoodlums can always get people to swear for you. Dave, I see you brought the box back. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. A bomb squad gave it the works. It, uh, wasn't a bomb. No, I see what's in it, Dave. Hmm. Huh. Six knives and a card. The funeral home of eternal peace. <laughs> That's one on you, Chameleon. Eternal peace? <laughs> Someone else is outside to see you, Mr. Chameleon. I wrote the name on this paper so this character, Finelli, won't know who it is. So I won't know. Let me see the name, Dave. Oh, they want to see him right away. Who is it? Never mind, Finelli. You just leave through that back private door there. I don't want you to see this caller. You listen to me, Chameleon. What's the matter, Finelli? You afraid my visitor will spill something about you? I'm warning you, don't try to pin this on me. Show him the back door, Dave. All right, but let me tell you this, Chameleon. You and nobody else is going to frame me and live to talk about it. That's funny. How scared Finelli got as soon as he heard that someone was here with information. Looks like there's something he doesn't want us to find out, Mr. Chameleon. Dave, we're in a bottleneck. Who is it? 
Vanilla? Smiley? Somebody we haven't even thought of? Those six knives, Dave. They're our big clue. But why six? Don't ask me, Mr. Chameleon. Well, maybe my visitor, Mr. Red Cagle, will have the answers. He says he's got something to tell you about the case. Well, he's a member of Smiley's gang. Okay, Dave, show Red Cagle in. Come on in, Cagle. Yeah, Detective Ronald. You uh, have some information for me, Cagle? I'll say I have, Mr. Chameleon. Okay, spill it. You want to know who bumped off those guys at the funeral home? That is the general idea. I know who done it. Who? The Smiley, Smiley Ruppin. Why are you telling me this, Cagle? Aren't you one of Smiley's own boys? No, not anymore. Like I'm telling you, double-crossed me, Smiley did, and I'm going to get even. How do you know Smiley did it? I'll make a deal with you, Mr. Chameleon. I'll tell you how I know and how you can get Smiley if you if you get me off the whole thing. Maybe uh, something can be arranged. Okay, I'm going to trust you. I know Smiley done it, Mr. Chameleon, because I was there. In the funeral home? Yeah, I saw the whole thing. It was terrible. I got a weak stomach, Mr. Chameleon. Yeah, I'll bet. No, honest, I tried to make him stop. That's what turned Smiley against me. Maybe I'm no rosebud, but there's some things that... Yeah, all right, all right, Kegel. You were going to tell us how to get Smiley. Smiley and the gang are pulling off a big bank job tonight. Where? At the Maritime Trust. Now, you go with me at 11 o'clock, Mr. Chameleon. I'll put the finger on the whole mob for you. Boy, Mr. Chameleon, this is the break we've been waiting for. The only thing I'm asking is to get a look at that rat Smiley's face when you pull him in. All right, Kegel. We'll go. And just before 11 o'clock that night, Mr. Chameleon and Detective Sergeant Arnold with the gangster Red Cagle drive their police car to a side street near the Maritime Trust. Cagle gets out, and they follow him in the darkness. Where the devil are you taking us, Cagle? It's Marley and the boys are going to be coming at the bank from that alley in the back, Mr. Chameleon. It's dark as pitch here. We might need some of your sharpshooting, Dave. It would be better if I could see the target. Uh-huh. How much further, Cagle? Around that corner, Mr. Kameen. You'll see him from there. I hope. Okay, stay here. You ready, Dave? Yeah. Hey, Cagle! Where's he going? He's beating it. Look out, Dave! It's a trap! Duck! <laughs> there they are! <laughs> miss- Run for it, Dave! This way! <laughs> Low down, dirty, good for nothing, Cagle! Hey, save your breath, Dave! All right, we're clear. There's our police car. Yeah. Oh, what a sucker I've been, Dave. Taking him by that two-bit gangster, walking into a trap. Well, at least they didn't get you, Mr. Chameleon. Come on in the car, Dave. Wait. What's this on the seat? Two boxes. One addressed to you, Dave. And one for me. Open them up. Knives. Six knives for you, and six for me. Mr. Chameleon and the case of murder in the house of torture continues in just a moment. The two most important kinds of relief to anyone suffering from ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain are fast relief and gentle, dependable relief. And genuine Bayer aspirin gives you both. It's amazingly fast because it's ready to go to work in two seconds. And it's completely dependable because its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system, mothers give it even to small children on their doctor's advice. Add to this Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect, a record no other pain reliever can match. And it's easy to see why Bayer Aspirin is one thing you can take with utmost confidence. So don't experiment with drugs that have not stood the test of time. For fast relief, and for the dependable relief that's important to your health, do as millions do, use Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Baffled by the most brutal case of his career, the gang killing centering on the funeral home of eternal peace. 
Mr. Chameleon paces up and down the office of the commissioner of police. The commissioner is saying... The newspapers are beginning to bear down on us, Chameleon. We've got to do something. Just one dead end after another. Commissioner, I've got a new lead, though. Hmm? I've just got a hunch this one may get us somewhere. New lead? What? That man who was tortured and killed at the funeral home. Big boy Harlan. Now, someplace in the back of my head, I remember that he was linked up with a girl. Hey, Chameleon, maybe you do have something. I finally dredged her name up from my memory. Her name is Bubbles DeLees. And the dragnet's been out for her for two days. If only we can find her. I have a feeling that we... Mr. Chameleon. Yes, what is it, Dave? We've got Bubbles DeLees. She's in your office now. Good work, Dave. Well, so long, Commissioner. I'll see you after I see Bubbles. Well, Dave, what's she like? Tough. Very. You think she knows anything? If she does, she's not telling me. Uh huh. Well, let's see. Well, how do you do, Mr. Lees? You, Mr. Chameleon? Yes, I am. You uh, know Detective Sergeant Arnold, I believe? Yeah, my bum luck. I'm hoping that you'll help me, Mr. Lees. Well, I never helped a copper yet, and I'm not starting now. Well, it's about your boyfriend, Big Boy Harlan. I don't know nothing about him getting bumped off, Mr. Chameleon, if that's what you mean. Mr. Lees, Bubbles, I can understand why you don't want to have anything to do with the police. But this is different. I don't know a thing. I think you do. And if you hold out on us, you're not as smart as I thought. I don't know a thing. If you hold out, you're not being fair to Big Boy. You loved him, didn't you? I don't know a thing. Bubbles... You didn't see what they did to Big Boy. I told you. They didn't just kill him, Bubbles. They tortured him. I can show you the pictures. I don't... Pictures? They hung Big Boy from the ceiling, but they kept him alive. And then they burned his body from top to toe. No. They branded his chest and then stuck six knives in him. Oh, no. They killed your man by inches, Bubbles. Don't you think he'd want you to get even? When he was hanging there and dying, why, I'll bet his last thoughts were Bubbles will fix them for this. Don't, don't tell me no more. Now, Bubbles, I'm giving you your chance to square things with those rats. I don't know, I don't know. Who do you think did it, Bubbles? (laughs) Smiley. Yes, Smiley Rippin, he's the one. How do you know? I know that's all. Mr. Chameleon, get that dirty rat for me. He killed my big boy, he did it, I'm telling you, you gotta get even for me. All right, Bubbles, we'll get even for you. Dave, come on outside for a minute, will you? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Dave, I want you to pick up Limping Joe. He's one of Smiley Rippin's gang. That's right. Dark-haired fellow with a very bad limp. You want to talk to him, Mr. Chameleon? No, Dave. I want you to hold Limping Joe incommunicado. Keep him where no one can see or speak with him. But you... Dave, Bubbles is sure that it's Smiley's, but we haven't got any evidence. Now, I propose to get into the apartment where Smiley and his wife Ruby live. Mr. Chameleon, you're not going to disguise yourself as Limpin' Joe. Exactly, Dave. Don't do it, Mr. Chameleon. This is one time I'm begging you not to. It's a terrible chance. Well, perhaps... But I think that I can break this case by getting into Smiley's house, and I intend to do it. I fully expect to clean up this case tonight, Dave. If Smiley doesn't clean you up first. And so Mr. Chameleon assumes the disguise of Limping Joe, a member of Smiley Rippin's gang. And that night we find him ringing the doorbell of Smiley's apartment. Smiley's wife, Ruby, answers the door and says, Limpin' Joe, what are you doing here? Hello, Ruby. Smiley home. Yeah? Hey, let me come in, Ruby. I'm beat. I got something to tell Smiley. Okay. Smiley, it's Limpin' Joe. What's up? I just came to Central Headquarters, Smiley. Central Headquarters? Yeah. Chameleon has been... Grilling me on the funeral home murders. Been asking me what you had to do with them. I told Chameleon to lay off me. Take it easy, Smiley. Shut up, Ruby. What do you know about it? Chameleon's just asking for trouble and he's going to get it. Right between the eyes. Smiley. Yeah, Limpy? Chameleon didn't get nothing out of me. What do you want, a medal? Hey, Smiley, that wasn't no picnic down there. They kept after me and after me. Okay, I believe you. I'm shaking all over. I need a drink. Go get yourself one. Yeah, in the other room, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Smiley, you nuts. 
Talking about killing Chameleon in front of Limpin' Joe? If Chameleon was here now, I'd bump him off. Limpin' Joe or no Limpin' Joe. Don't want you to take no dumb chances, Smiley. I've got to get Chameleon before he gets me. He's getting too close. What was that? Something fell in the other room. What's Limpin' Joe doing in there? Just gonna open the door a crack and take a quick look. Don't let him see you, Ruby. Not me. Smiley. Hmm? That's not Limpin' Joe, it's Chameleon. What? That dirty dick got in here by pretending to be Limpin' Joe. I'll kill him. No, Smiley. Not here. You go on, take it on the lamb. I'll hold him here while you make your getaway. All right. I'll get Chameleon later. You're a pal, Ruby. Good luck, Smiley. Same to you, baby. Now it's you and me, Chameleon. I'll just open the door on you and give you a nice surprise. Limpin' Joe. What is it, Ruby? Have a nice drink, Limpin' Joe. Hey, Ruby, what's the idea of the gun? I just feel like pointing it at you, Limpin' Joe. Or should I say Mr. Chameleon? Oh. You know, Yeah. Eh? Where's Smiley? He's gone. Smiley's making his getaway. I'm uh, not after Smiley, Ruby. What? There's a girl named Bubbles de Lees, rather special friend of big boy Harlan, the man who was hung and tortured in the funeral home. Don't stall me, Chameleon. You can talk till you're blue in the face and I'll still hold this gun on you till Smiley makes his getaway. I told you I'm not after Smiley. Bubbles de Lees gave me some information that pins the murders not on Smiley, but on someone else. Keep talking, Chameleon. Bubbles told me about six special squeals that tie in perfectly with six knives. Six squeals that leave right to this house. Then it is, Smiley, you're after. Oh, Ruby, I found the rest of my evidence in your room. What? Loot from bank robberies. Bank robberies that took place when Smiley was in jail. You're the one I'm after. You yourself operate that deadly gang. I'll hand it to you, Chameleon. You're smart. Well, thank you. But not quite smart enough for me. Sure I'm the boss. Sure I kill Big Boy and the rest of them. So now you know. But it won't do you no good, Chameleon, because I'm going to kill you. You won't get away with it, Ruby. No. No, the cops know I'm here. They'll be right on your tail. I'm not dumb enough to kill you here, Chameleon. You'll get yours outside. Oh, Ruby, Get going, Chameleon, out the door. Go on or I will shoot you here. Now, listen, now, maybe we can talk this over. Open the front door, Chameleon. Now, March, in front of me, smart boy. I got six special knives waiting for you. Where are you taking me, Ruby? Wouldn't you like to... Drop no, that no, gun, no, Ruby! You... Dave, give her the works, but don't kill her! It's against the wall, Ruby! You all right, Mr. Chameleon? Yeah, I played every card to get Ruby to march me outside. You mean you tricked me into walking you out of the apartment, Chameleon? That's right, Ruby. We got Smiley, Mr. Chameleon. The boys caught him at the front door. Smiley doesn't know anything about the funeral home murders, Dave. Smiley doesn't... Well, then who? You're looking right at her, Ruby. But I thought she was just covering for Smiley. No, Dave. Smiley was small time in comparison to Ruby. With her twisted imagination and her diabolical revenges. Handcuff her, Dave. The case is over. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Next time an ordinary headache threatens to spoil your plans, get fast relief by taking Bayer Aspirin. You'll be amazed at how quickly Bayer Aspirin works, and the reason is that these tablets start to disintegrate within two seconds after you take them. To see for yourself that this is true, just drop a Bayer Aspirin tablet in a glass of water and watch what happens. Before it reaches the bottom of the glass, it will begin to disintegrate. It does the same in your stomach, hence brings relief with astonishing speed. Yes, and Bayer Aspirin is dependable, too. Its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect is a record no other pain reliever can match. When you buy, ask for it by name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece.
Listen next Wednesday night at the same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of the Murdered Gold Digger. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson with dialogue by Carol Warner Gluck from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. You probably have heard or read about the remarkable discovery that actually cuts down tooth decay, ammoniated tooth powder. Today, Dr. Lyons, America's favorite tooth powder, is available in this ammoniated form. Based on a formula developed by University of Illinois scientists, it destroys bacteria Lactobacillus acidophilus, which cause cavities. Thus, it not only cuts down tooth decay, but pain, worry, and expense as well. So to reduce tooth decay, to have sounder, healthier, handsomer teeth, use ammoniated Dr. Lyons tooth powder. Both regular Dr. Lyons tooth powder and new ammoniated Dr. Lyons are at all drug and toilet goods counters. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of the Murdered Gold Digger next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. On one hand, Chameleon's Disguise, which is one of the better ones we've heard in recent months, as well as one that actually seemed to be relevant to accomplishing in the case, was seen through most likely because he was caught not limping. On the bright side, he got two really good set of knives out of the case, which will really help him in the kitchen. Given how many knives she was sending out and using, maybe they should have investigated who bought like a thousand sets of knives in bulk. I wonder if somehow in the writing they'd forgot she'd already sent a set of knives to Chameleon at headquarters when she sent a second set along with the one for Dave Arnold. This one was different, and I'm not certain it was in a good way. We moved Chameleon off his typical work of catching upper-class killers involved in soap opera-like scenarios involving your typical uh, soap opera upper-class offenders to hardened killers of the underworld whose methods would likely have been too ghastly for the air if it were possible to take this show seriously. Also, I guess that Finelli wasn't nervous about an informer showing up at police headquarters since he had nothing to do with this. But at any rate, this was something they theorized. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and we're going to YouTube, where, regarding the episode Murder and the Attractive Shoplifter, Maureen said, why would they murder their employees, referring to the killers in that case. And Maureen, this is a good point, and I think thought Chameleon had explained it, but I went back and listened, and no, he did not. I mean, I think the second person was killed to cover up the first murder, but the reason for the first murder, who knows? I mean, there are a couple that get used, such as someone deciding that they were going to stop committing crime or someone threatened to go to the police. But that's not actually stated in the episode, so good catch. Uh, some other comments on this episode. Uh, Terry said, I'm loving your channel. Great stories. Thank you. Anthony uh, said, uh, very entertaining classic. And then we had a comment regarding the dinner of death from uh, Chimney. Uh, thanks, was not crazy about the wife and daughter. Voices too sharp and hysterical, but it moved fast, and for the time period, was okay. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you leaving those comments on YouTube. Really helps with the engagement and for the channel to keep on growing. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Christine. Christine has been one of our Patreon supporters since November, currently supporting the podcast at the Seamus level of $4 or more per month. 
Thank you so much for your support, Christine. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. All those great things that help YouTube channels to grow. We will be back next Thursday with another episode of Mr. Chameleon. Next Tuesday, we'll have the return of Ellery Queen. But join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... Sorry, Johnny, no bodyguard. The informants I'm working with will take off fast if they spotted one. No informants, no story. That insurance policy your paper took out on you, who's the beneficiary? A dear departed wife, Joan. Departed? I thought... We split up a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, aren't I? Yeah, we were living in two different worlds. I wanted a home and family. She wanted a trip to the moon every night. Where is she now? Who knows? On her way to the moon, I guess. Hey, look. This story you're working on, aren't you? It's hot, Johnny. And big, real big. A national gambling syndicate. And run by a guy right here in New York. Who? I'm getting close, but I'm not sure yet. When I am, then out come my articles. What's this guy going to do when you push him into a corner? Look, I'm worried about you. You look, Johnny, I'm not as foolish as you think. I've got his name written down and put in a safe deposit box with what evidence I got. That's my real insurance. Oh, all right, look, we've been friends a long time. I'm not going to let you do this alone. Sorry, Johnny. i got to go it alone. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.